Today on the crappy diagram channel, one of these is real. There's a TSB for poor AC performance. You've got the, the blower on a certain speed and then all of a sudden the air that comes out the vents is reduced. Really the only common components. All right, welcome back party people. Today, we're gonna to talk about something that I've kind of been working on. It's the air conditioning system in this 2019 Ford Transit cargo van. I've been troubleshooting an intermittent problem, which I think now is the evaporator core icing over. We're gonna talk about the system in general, how it works, how you can monitor it, what happens to the airflow. Also a TSB that you might be interested in if you have poor AC performance, if you have a 2015 to 2019 Ford Transit. So let's get started. So I want to start by talking about the electrical from the user input perspective. So this is the HVAC control panel, which is part of the HVAC module, which is this. Now, as you see, there's a variety of selectors and controls here. And basically we've got a fan or blower motor speed control. We have a temperature control. We have a air distribution control. We have an AC on control and also a recirculation button as well. So when you press the AC button, there's actually an AC request signal sent to the BCM of the van. What you need to know about the BCM is, is pretty basic at this point. Uh, it's the body control module and basically it controls and monitors certain accessories on the body of the vehicle. And it also acts as a communication gateway to the PCM. Now, as the AC request signal is sent to the BCM, the BCM relays that information to the PCM, and that is the powertrain control module. And basically, just like the BCM, it's an electrical module that controls and monitors certain aspects of the powertrain, like the engine, the transmission, etc. And it also has interfaces to monitor, monitor certain sensors. In this case, as the AC request signal comes down to the PCM, if certain logic is met, the PCM will then energize the AC clutch relay, which is actually under the hood of the van. And I'll go show you that. All right, so under the hood of the van, this is our battery junction box. And if you lift the cover on this, uh, you'll see a set of fuses and a set of relays. And I know for a fact it is the R10 relay here. So, uh, all right, so I know that R10 relay is actually the clutch relay. Uh, so that would be this particular relay right here. So when that relay is energized, it actually also energizes the coil on the AC compressor. This is the AC compressor that I'm actually pointing to. And uh, the AC compressor has a clutch on it. And this particular clutch mechanism is magnetic. And so when uh, that coil energizes, basically the fan, uh, the belt that is actually spinning the pulley will actually engage with the AC compressor and they work as a unit. And so the belt starts to turn the AC compressor. I talked about the PCM energizing the AC clutch relay, but it only does that if certain parameters are actually met. So there's a little bit of logic built in. Part of that logic is the AC pressure transducer. So this is a sensor that is under the hood on the high side of the uh, refrigerant line. It is measured and if that sensor is reporting too low or too high of pressure, then the clutch relay will not be engaged and that will be reported back. Also, if you have the, the engine coolant is reading too high of a temperature, uh, the AC clutch will not engage. And this ambient air temperature sensor, which I've done a video previously on this, it's located up near the front bumper inside by the actual condenser if that sensor is actually reading below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius, the AC clutch relay will not engage. And that's really to protect uh, because you already have a freezing temperature uh, in the system. If you're moving the vehicle and a wide open throttle condition is present, then the AC clutch relay will not engage at that point in time either. There also exists an EVAP temperature sensor that measures the temperature of the air blowing after the evaporator core. And if that temperature gets below a certain level as well, um, usually somewhere close to freezing, then the AC clutch will not, the, the AC clutch relay, relay will not 
be energized as well. Also, there's a bunch of other sensors that exist like mass airflow, intake air temperature sensor. Uh, if any of those kind of don't mesh with what the other sensors are reading, basically the AC clutch relay will not energize. A little bit later on, we'll connect four scan. We'll actually look at a couple of PIDs in the system that tells us when this button has actually been pressed and when the AC clutch relay has been energized. All right, so let's talk about the other push button that exists on the uh, instrument panel for the HVAC control center, and that is the recirculation button. That button actually controls uh, part of the climate control assembly which exists right under the dash here on the passenger side and I'll show that to you in a minute when we drop the uh, the uh, glove compartment open you'll be able to see the complete climate control assembly housing at least not necessarily everything inside of it but when you press this button basically uh, it controls a actuator so there's a motor that exists and uh, it will turn a door to either accept air from the hood and the air inlet duct coming from the hood or get recirculated air from inside the cabin. All right, so if we drop the glove compartment and release these two tabs here, we can actually get to the climate control assembly. All right, so we've dropped the glove compartment and this entire housing here, this black piece is the climate control assembly. It includes the fan motor. It includes the evaporator core. There's a heater core up behind it. Here is the, um, the air filter housing here. And if you take that out and remove your air filter, you can actually see the inlet duct up through the hood there. And uh, there is a motor on the side here. All right, if you can see up there where that blue connector is, where the light is shining there, that is the actual motor for the recirc control. And when you press that button, you'll, you can see the door actually open or close. All right, so right now I have the vehicle running and I have the air conditioner off. I'm gonna turn the fan on and right now I'm fresh air. You can see the door inside there is actually letting air in from the underside of the hood of the van. I'm trying to get in there. The underside of the hood of the van. Now when I press the reset button, so basically all I'm going to do here is actually turn the uh, on to max AC and that's going to automatically turn on the research. And you can see now the actuator engaged and that door has closed now. And so now it's accepting all its air through the cabin and that air is probably going to be much cooler and easy to cool and that's why they call it max AC because the temperature difference is much smaller than it would be if you were bringing fresh hot air in from the outside. If we turn off recirc, you can hear the door open and now all of a sudden you see right out to the hood of the van. All right so let's talk about the selector knobs now. So when we talk about the fan or the blower knob, the blower selector which is this button when you enable the fan there's a couple of things going on here the hvac module is actually talking through the bcm to activate the blower relay and depending on the level of fan you've uh, selected there uh, the series of resistors are either in line or bypassed and that gives you the different blower motor speed and if you let me see if i can get enough light in there. So there are a, the set of blower motor resistors that are actually plugged into the side of the blower housing there. Now the blower motor relay is actually located in the fuse panel under the steering wheel there. So you have to pop that lower panel off. I'm not going to go over that because there's tons of videos of where that's located at. And just remember also, I'm not showing everything in this diagram. There's obviously um, these lines are also fused and so wherever you see one of these relays there's also uh, fuses that uh, apply as well. All right so let's talk about the second selector knob which is the air temperature selector here which is on this van is the middle button here. When you change the temperature selector dial basically you're controlling a stepper motor that exists and that stepper motor controls the mixer or the blend door of how much air is actually going through the heater core versus how much is not going through the heater core. 
all air passes through the evaporator core, whether you have that selector on cold or hot, so it doesn't matter. It all goes through the evaporator core. If you start to kind of warm this air up, that door will move and actually redirect some of the air into the heater core, which gives you this blending air conditioner and heater effect around this area. And then as you turn this knob to go to heat only, then all of the air that exits the evaporator core will then get redirected into the heater core as well and give you complete hot air. So that actuator along with the next actuator I'm talking about are on the side here. They're um, screwed to the side of the middle console part there. Uh, as you can see inside there and those two are the actuators that control the temperature blend and also the uh, registers so where air distribution occurs so maybe you have floor only or if you have panel directed to your face or if you have defrost or a mix of those so that leads me to what this selector knob actually does controls the air distribution so whether it comes out the front vent here towards your face, whether it comes out some of the defrosters, uh, the side defrosters, or comes out from the floor. And as you select that knob, it controls this stepper motor that uh, I just showed. There's a door in there that can redirect the air to your face, to the floor, to defrost, and um, a combination of blends. All right, so we just got through talking about the electrical part of the air conditioner system. Let's talk a little bit about the airflow. So we'll start outside and we'll kind of go through this, but first, so if you have this research button off, that means you're gonna get fresh air from the outside. And that comes from the air intake starting at the hood. And so I'll go show you that. Okay, so the one thing you wanna realize about these air intake vents, on the hood of the transit is is that one of these is a dummy and one of these is real you can see that they're screening this one and so the direction of airflow if you have it set to fresh air enters the top of the hood through this vent it actually goes through the interior ductwork out through here and then into the cabin through this air inlet and i think there was also some mix-ups in manufacturing at some point in time where they actually plug the wrong side so if you're having problems with your air conditioner not cooling on fresh air not recirc but on fresh air go check and make sure there's not a plug on the left side or the passenger side uh, it shouldn't be there it should be on the driver's side because the air comes in the top of the vent in the hood it flows this channel that's inside the hood here exits here and goes in the air inlet here and then inside to the cabin all right so that was for fresh air so we saw the air intake from the hood if you have the recirc button actually pressed here then you're going to get air from inside the cabin that door will open to the inside cabin and it will close off to the outside fresh air and vice versa that airflow continues to the fan the fan blows across the evaporator core now if the ac clutch relay and the AC clutch has been engaged and the compressor is working and the system refrigerant is working as designed as air blows across that evaporator core it should be cooled down and directed through here now if the AC is not on the, the air is still blown through the evaporator core but since the compressor is not engaged you won't get the cooling effect that you would get if the AC compressor was engaged so continuing this airflow down we have another door that selects the temperature and that door can be in multiple positions it's a stepper motor so um, based on how you've blended the temperature here uh, will determine it will determine how this door is positioned and uh, if you've got a blend of, of hot air and cold air uh, then some of that air will go through the heater core and you also get the air that goes through the evaporator core and they mix and that will follow out the air registers depending on this actuator door that we talked about depending on what you have selected here that deter that determines whether the air goes out to your face to the floor to defrost or to a mix of those so the one thing that's probably going to jump out to you and as it did to me 
all air travels through the evaporator core. So if you experience a problem in the van where you've got the, the blower on a certain speed and then all of a sudden the air that comes out the vents is reduced, really the only common components would be the evaporator core or something possibly in the, uh, the registers or the ducts. And if you can rule out the registers and the ducts are clean and your air filter is clean, the only thing that would be reducing that airflow is your evaporator core. I suspect what's happening in my case is that we're getting an icing over of the evaporator core. The air cannot pass through and so we get this reduced air coming out the vent. Now it is slightly cold and there is a little bit of air coming out but not as much as you would get if this was a nice uniced evaporator core. All right so then how do we monitor this system and determine that all the sensors and electrical parts behaving correctly and all of the refrigerant system and the part of the uh, AC system that is actually under the hood is working in conjunction. So I, I'm using two tools I use for the electrical part. I'm using Forescan and I can monitor some, some of these PIDs or parameters and see what's happening uh, from all of these different sensors as well as looking at some of the command signals that are being sent back and forth uh, between BCM and PCM and the HVAC control module as well as um, having a manifold gauge set to plug into both the low and high service ports that will tell you a lot about your pressure levels and about how effective your air conditioner system is and you really need to compare what you're seeing there with what you're seeing on the electrical side in order to effectively troubleshoot so um, I'm going to go outside and show you where these ports are located. We'll actually start up Forescan uh, and plug it into our OBD2 port. We'll monitor some PIDs and uh, we'll take a look at some of the pressures I currently have in the system just to show you how to do that. All right, All right. so we're back under the hood. The first thing you want to do is actually find your service ports. And if you look right here by the battery junction box, you'll see your high side service port. Just unscrew the black cap on that. It will be the smaller of the two. All right, so there is the low side. Look for the larger diameter cooling pipe. And as you can see right here, we are going to unscrew the cap on that. And typically it will be marked somehow. This particular one, you can see there's a blue mark on it that means that this is the low pressure side. All right, so I have a manifold gauge set here and basically it has a low side gauge as well as a high side gauge, high side being red, low side being blue here and all the necessary uh, monitoring of uh, the different systems. This is a R134A system. So I'm just gonna look at the low side pressure and high side pressure. First, I want to make sure that my vacuum valve and my refrigerant valve is closed. I don't want it to, to suck anything from any of those. Also, the valves on the side, I want to make sure they're closed. So turn those clockwise to tighten those. I'm not adding or discharging anything from the system. I'm just monitoring. On my quick connects here, I'm, I'm opening up my quick connects. And these are kind of like uh, shock pumps for bicycle shocks so basically th these things quick connect on top of the 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 valve assembly and then as you screw this down clockwise it actually um, there's a a pin in there that uh, depresses the schrader valve and that's when the system will start reading pressure so i'm gonna go ahead and connect these up to the correct service ports and you'll see that we won't get any pressure reading whatsoever um, until we actually screw those in and you just need to screw those in enough to to actually see a uh, pressure reading here so let's do that all right in this vehicle uh, the low side is always the hardest one to get to and so basically the the way these quick connects work are kind of like air chucks so you just depress this down pop it down on the uh, service port release it and it'll lock on all right i've got my low side locked on the service port there all right i'm gonna do the high side all right, so my high side is locked on. So notice, no reading yet. Now I'm gonna turn these clockwise and get a reading. And this will just be a static, a static pressure reading because I don't have the clutch engaged yet. You just need to turn it until you start getting a reading. I'm gonna go connect four scan up, we'll throw the PIDs in, and then we'll monitor the system. All right, so I just have my uh, OBD2 Wi-Fi 
reader here. I'm just going to plug it into the port here. And I've got my laptop. Got my laptop out. And I'm just going to throw the keys in ignition here. So notice our ACP pressure there on our high side, 111.7 PSI. Now if we come out to our service gauge here on the high side, we're really close, right? All right, so I'm currently monitoring my ambient air temperature, the ACC command status, the ACC request status, the evaporator temperature, um, wide open throttle detector, uh, the, AC, the high side pressure transducer, uh, pressure, um, the, the exhaust temperature, and the head temperature, and then uh, the map pressure at the map sensor. So I'm just looking at all of these, and I'm just going to uh, take the laptop over and kind of control some buttons and show you what happens here as I do those. All right, so I'm going to actually command the AC on, and I'm going to do that by just turning the fan on to one, and. Uh, We'll see what happens here. So our AC request is a yes. You press the AC button. The AC clutch command is on, meaning the clutch uh, relay was engaged and that the clutch is engaged now. So the compressor is actually working. And we can go outside and verify that. We can verify that by looking at the compressor. As you can see, way down in there on the compressor, the pulley, the actual inside of that pulley is spinning. That means the compressor is actually turning and it's uh, pumping coolant and uh, lubricating oil through the system. Also note that we have a change in our pressure readings. Once we the clutch is engaged on the compressor and the compressor is running, we see our low side drop down here and we're at about 20, 24 and then again we see our our clutch disengaged there so we went back up and then it re-engaged and so we're going back down toward 20 and we can see our high side pressure here so the charge in my system right now is a little bit uh, wonky because i've actually been playing around with it in order to get the to actually reproduce this icing problem but uh, uh, this may not be what you would see in a normal system and i'm just trying to show you how these kind of correlate do some Notice the uh, high side pressure transducer going up. Notice our evap temperature, which by the way, seems to be off by about 20 or 30 degrees. I'm not sure why. And uh, if we turn the, the actual air conditioner off, we see that we commanded it AC request to no and the clutch relay is de-energized and the compressor is no longer running. Now we can go verify that because if we look at that pulley, the center of it, which is the part that runs the compressor, will not be turning with the pulley. All right, so now if you look down in there, the inside of that compressor pulley is not magnetized and turning along with the, the belt. Pulley. So there's a lot of things you can verify here that are either working or not working. I'm not going over a bunch of details about the condenser, how to detect leaks or anything like that. Right now I'm just trying to trying to tell you that, you know, there's a few things I pointed out like the airflow and this misplugged hood thing. And then also if you go into your dealership and you tell them that the air is not consistently blowing out, so sometimes it might decrease. There's something going on probably at the evaporator if you've cleared the registers and you make sure there's nothing blocking there and that your um, filter is not clogged, then there's some kind of restriction of air through the evaporator core. And a lot of times that's caused by icing. So I don't know what's going on there. Also, one final thing I'd like to point out. There's a TSB for poor AC performance and apparently some of these uh, climate control systems, specifically the evaporator core portion of these has leaks in it and there is a TSB out for 2015 to 2019 Ford Transits and I will put that up right here in the video so you can see that but if you're experiencing that take it into your dealer and see if they can actually locate a leak in the evaporator core that's definitely going to give you decreased uh, performance of your AC system if it does 
This climate control housing here, this whole black piece, is a bear to get out if you want to DIY it. Um, basically, they recommend you take the front doors off. They recommend you unconnect the steering column. There's the, the steering shaft there. You have to drop the dash and you have to remove the climate control housing. So I think it's a six, seven hour job for a train mechanic and it's probably an all day job for somebody like me. You can actually change the evaporator core without changing the entire complete AC or climate control housing. So that's good news, but uh, the barrier is just to get that thing out. So there you go. Um, I will continue to update you guys as I find more things, but I've made some, system, some changes on the system now and uh, verified a few things and I'm ready to go out on a longer trip. I may have fixed the problem and I may have not, but I'm definitely getting closer to what the actual problem is. And by the way, I took this to the dealership last week and told them my symptoms and basically they come back and basically said, unless you can reproduce it, uh, we didn't find anything you know out of the ordinary so there you go all right so big disclaimer i didn't cover a lot of stuff in here obviously of the air conditioning system on this van specifically a lot of the different fuses i didn't cover the condenser here in the front or any of the routing of the hvac lines the expansion valve the receiver dryer unit that's mounted on the side of the condenser none of that stuff i covered but it wasn't really it wasn't really the intent of this video it was more to show you how to troubleshoot uh, what's going on electrically and correlate that to um, what you're seeing mechanically. All right, so that'll do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the content and hopefully there were some useful tidbits of information in there. If you like the content, give me a thumbs up, share the link with your friends, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Only about two to three percent of the viewers that view my videos are actually subscribers. I'd really appreciate it if you click that subscribe button. And until next time, you know what to do. Skill up and ride, van up and go.